Hi, welcome to the EDM Matters Christmas Cooking Special. Lil Texas, what are we cooking today? I'm glad you asked. So we're gonna make a pork tenderloin, we're gonna make a little chimichurri, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a nice dry rub and roast some vegetables. Something you can do at home, it's affordable, it'll get you laid, Yeah. impress your friends. Love it. What more could you want, baby? So we are going to start with the pork tenderloin preparation, right? What do we have to do to this cut to get it ready to cook? Okay, so you know, first and foremost, you know, just go to go to your local grocery store, get yourself a nice pork tenderloin, they're pretty cheap. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of trim these down so that they're like even pieces and then save the scraps for something later. First and foremost, what we wanna do is we wanna kinda just clean these up, get them sort of even. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda like square this off right here, or round it off. I should say. Perfect. And then kind of do the same thing over here. And then I'm gonna kind of trim some of this fat off um, just so it's a little more uh, tender. You yeah. Know? Is this a dish you've made before? Oh yeah. Oh, so, okay. So I really like I really like pork tenderloin. I think it's good. It's easy to overdo pork tenderloin though and uh, have it come out dry. So what you wanna do is you just kinda wanna look around, see what you got, see if there's any fat that you can cut off. Um, if you want to keep it on there, then that's cool too. Um, but I'm gonna kind of trim some of this off so uh, we get a cleaner piece of meat. Perfect. And you can see, see how it's all silver like that? Oh yeah. You know, like I don't, I don't want to put that on my, uh, on my, my tenderloin. So I'm gonna get rid of that. We got these looking like they're pretty good. I'm gonna cut that little piece off right there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this. You know, I'll get rid of some of that fat, and I'll chop this up, and I'll use it later for something else. So you can reserve that. I will give that to you. you oh, can thank you very much. In the refrigerator. Yeah. So now we wash our hands because we're nice, good, good chefs, not cross-contaminating anything. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys how to make a really quick and easy dry rub. So we have five parts, and the great thing about this dry rub for this pork tenderloin, and you could put it on chicken, you could put it on anything basically, um, is that it's all equal parts. Here I did a tablespoon of each uh, ingredient. Okay. So what we have is we have cumin, we have garlic powder, thyme, oregano, and coriander. So we're going to put these into a bowl, and then we're going to... Uh, we're gonna mix them all together and uh, rub the pork down with it. You know? Amazing. And we'll do a little salt and pepper as well. You know, always a little bit of salt and pepper. So we got two pork tenderloins and then we're just gonna, you know, rub this all together. You know, and, and I'll kinda, I'll taste it a little bit. And so then we're gonna, we're gonna just go ahead and start rubbing this down. So how thick do we wanna get the rub on the actual tenderloin? Um, you know, you just wanna get it covered, man. You know, it's, it's uh, I kinda cook, a little bit with my eyes and a little bit with like the feeling, you know, where it's like, if it looks like it's too much, it's probably too much. You do have a lot of experience doing this. You worked at a restaurant for a long time. Yeah, I did, I did. I actually worked at a place called Faith and Flower, which is downtown LA. Um, I, I was on the raw bar for a while. They had me work a dollar oyster hour mm -hmm. alone. Um, so if anybody out there knows what it's like to uh, shuck oysters, working a uh, dollar oyster hour at a, uh, very high traffic restaurant can be a stressful thing. Absolutely. So, you know, these look nice to me. Good little amount of rub, you know, I'll kind of brush them down a little bit. Is it important to get anything in like the crevices or? Yeah, definitely. I'm kind of like, you know, making sure I got everything in there. Yeah. We're going to get the grill ready. All right, let's do it. All right, so the next step is we're gonna wanna sear the pork in a hot pan. Um, you know, I got a little olive oil in there. Um, any, you know, Oil will work, preferably something a little higher smoke point, but olive oil's fine. Um, we're gonna, yeah, I see it smoking just a little bit, so that means it's ready. We wanna cook this on high. Don't put it in the pan unless you hear that sound. So what we wanna do, dry rub, salt, pepper, the seasonings, we're gonna sear it, and then we're gonna put it in the oven for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. So next, what we're gonna do is while that's searing, we're gonna, you know, prep our vegetables. Um, we got here, we got broccoli, cauliflower, and yeah. carrots. Broccoli, cauliflower, and rainbow carrots. And, you know, just, just chop them up, man. Who cares? Chop it however the hell you want. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Chop it up like a red DJ. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> Oof. Uh, so, yeah, we'll... <laughs> I didn't mean to attack anyone with that. No, 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 it's good. 
But this is just straight on the baking tray. Yeah, straight on the baking tray. We'll get them ready. They're gonna cook down a little bit. Um, shrink a little bit. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. shrink a little bit. Check on our pork. Oh yeah, there we go. See, that's the kind of crust we're looking for right there. You know, you want that nice, that nice color. You can hear it. You know, if you scraped a fork across this, you would be able to hear that. So we're gonna try to get all these different sides ready. Um, and while that's going, I'm gonna come back. We're gonna do the carrots now. So is there anything to be said about how close the vegetables are in the tray? I've heard if you're yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get them a little bit of space. Make sure your knife is sharp, Make sharper sure the knife. Sharp. The sharper knife is both quicker and safer. Yeah, absolutely. Well, contrary to popular belief, a dull knife is more dangerous. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're gonna leave those for now. Um, right. While this stuff is getting ready, over here. Next, you're gonna to wanna to kinda of get the sides. You know. There you go. Now, for the prep for the uh, vegetables, buy nice organic vegetables, okay? You don't need to do all sorts of fancy stuff with vegetables. I'm literally, literally going to put olive oil, a little bit of oil, and salt. That's it. That's it. Personally, I want to taste the vegetable. You know, I want to taste the vegetable with a little bit of char um, and just like, you know, a little bit of salt, man. And that, that's really all you need to bring that nice color into it. My mouth is already watering. All right. Those are looking absolutely beautiful. Okay. Woo hoo hoo. I can see, yeah, definitely in the crevices. You can definitely yeah. tell it's still pink. It's charring on the outside. So, so normally I would try to give them some room, but you know, sometimes you can stack them up next to each other just to keep them propped up. You know what I mean? So anyways, these are good. So now we're going to get these immediately into the oven. Okay. So I'm going to lay these on a baking tray. Okay. We're gonna immediately put these into a 425 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes, okay? So, depends on what you want. At this exact time, we're going to put the vegetables in as well. For about the same time. So I'm gonna check on this stuff, you know, as it cooks. Um, but that's, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so our veggies and our pork are in the oven. Now we're working on the chimichurri, right? Yeah, totally. Okay. So, so I want like a, a cool garnish, you know. Chimichurri uh, looks beautiful. You know, it's got a lot of bright, vibrant color and it tastes really good as well. Um, I just love the different stuff that we do in it. And I'm gonna put my own little, little twist on it. So chimichurri is really easy, guys. Super, super easy. All you need is cilantro, parsley, garlic, Shallot. It might sound a little complex, but whatever. My secret ingredient <laughs> is adding a serrano pepper. Um, I also gives really like kick. these. Gives it a little, little kick. I'll leave yeah. a couple seeds in it just to add a little spice if I want. First, I want to show you guys how to cut a shallot. So first, what you want to do is you want to cut into it long ways like this. Yep. And then we're going to cut it this way. and then you cut it like this. And then you have perfect little squares. And so then we're gonna chop up some garlic. Garlic can be pesky to peel sometimes, so what I do is I will smash it down with my knife. Then that takes the skin right off. We'll cut the back end off so it is not gross. Put the, the shallots in here. I'm gonna use about three um, pretty big cloves and we will chop these up. Should that be finely chopped, like the shallot, or a little bit more kind of rough? Uh, I like to finely chop them, um, so I'll kind of, you know, go in and do it this way. So yeah, I like to take my knife, put it like that, and you can kind of get a quick, even chop, as opposed to, you know, 
You don't, you don't want to do that. That looks about good to me. I'm gonna take all this garlic. It's a lot of garlic. Yeah. So we're gonna put that in there. The next thing I want to do is the serrano pepper. So what you're gonna do, pull the top off like that. So what I'm gonna do is I cut it in half, then I cut it long ways, and then I'm gonna cut that long ways as well. I'm gonna take the seeds out like that. You can leave some of the seeds in if you like, but serranos can get pretty hot pretty quick. You also wanna be careful touching your eyes after cutting a pepper. Absolutely. And then I'm gonna dice these up into fine strips like so. And you wanna cut into the back side of the pepper so it's easy to cut. We'll turn these sideways and then we'll dice them. And what technique are you using to chop with your, uh, the hand that's holding the peppers? So what you wanna do is you wanna take your fingers, put them like that and it's use them as a bridge, yeah. And then you got your knife and you wanna hold your knife like this, okay? So you don't want to put your finger on top of the knife. No, you don't want to. You don't want to cut like that. You cut like this. Common misconception. Yeah. Hold it like that. Fingers here, and then you work your way back. Doesn't that look beautiful? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So next, uh, we'll do the cilantro. What you can do is bunch it up a little bit. This is a little trick. You bunch it up, and then chop it from that bunch. I like to get it kind of, kind of nice and fluid. Um, it's going to make the sauce better. Also, it's going to release the oils. You know, you can see it sort of darken up and get like, you know, kind of deep green within there. Um, once you get those like real fine chops down, it'll, the the color will get a little deeper, um, and that's when you know like the, you know, the flavor and the oils are coming out. So that looks good to me. So now we're going to do a little bit of parsley. I do less parsley than I do cilantro. Um, I find that the parsley can kind of, I don't know, the cilantro is the flavor I want. Throw a little bit of that in there, maybe about that much. So we got all the main ingredients. So you got the garlic, the shallots, the cilantro, the serrano pepper, and the parsley all here. Now, olive oil in the chimichurri. What you're going to want to do is fill this up right to the point of like saturation. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna add some red wine vinegar. And that's the, the real key ingredient to chimichurri. That's gonna make that kind of bitter cut, you know, that you want in the sauce. I'm gonna add some salt. I'm gonna grab my own spoon. You definitely need some salt in there. Um, and we'll throw a little bit of pepper. See, I think it needs more vinegar. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna put more vinegar in it. Now, we got a chimichurri. Oh! There we go. That's the, oh. Yeah. Damn, yeah. We're gonna check on the meat and the vegetables. So, these are looking quite nice. And what I'm going to do now, sort of rotate them. You know, we'll kind of do that. We'll, we'll turn them over a little bit. You know, just so we get an even char on all the sides, you know. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. The broccoli's looking good. Carrots take a little bit longer. We'll put these back in. Let them char up a little bit longer. The pork's looking pretty good. We're pretty close on the pork. It's looking pretty good. You know, it's feeling pretty good. So, you know, I think uh, we're gonna take it out now. Ooh. We're gonna let these go for a little bit longer. I don't want my pork overdone. No. That's a big, big common mistake when it comes to uh, cooking pork. Thinking that you need to overcook it? Yeah, exactly. That came from like back when pork was much less sanitary. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was, a, uh, it was an unsanitary meat that, you know, you had you to, cook. to cook. Yeah, you had to cook it all yeah. the way these through. These days, not so much. You can get it more medium. Yeah, yeah. All right, so our pork tenderloin is out of the oven. We have our chimichurri sauce. Yeah. We're ready to plate. We're ready to plate. So uh, we let this rest for about five minutes. You can do a little bit longer. You know, it's, it's very important because when meat cooks, it sweats. It's like, it's like think about what, what happens to you when you get in a sauna. You know, you're sweating and you're like, ah! <laughs> and so when you get out of it, all that sweat dries back onto your skin. Sure, you yeah, know? oh yeah. Um, and so it's the same thing with meat. You want the like juices and stuff to come back into the meat. That's the first way that I've heard it explained in that way. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. So you, gotta, so you gotta do that. So now we're gonna cut it. 
you know, and you want like pretty even pieces, you know, and that looks pretty good, you know. Nice even pieces of pork. I think the, the bigger sections are gonna be a little better. Take it. <laughs> Come on, camera guy. Here. Um, and we're gonna stack these up, sort of, you know, kind of how we cut yeah, them. Angle them a little bit. Yeah, like we're gonna of, angle them, yeah. sort of like kind of how we cut them. I think it looks half decent, you know. We're, we're cooking at home. We're not, we're not trying to get too crazy fancy here. We'll take the chimichurri. You're gonna want to stir it up and sort of kind of drain a little bit of that oil off. You don't want it to get too crazy. And then we're just gonna kind of ladle it over the pork, you know. Um, oh man just to give it that extra bit of flavor, you know, and, 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 and a bit of color, you know, because I think it looks, I think it looks really nice. Amazing. And there you go, folks. Pork tenderloin with chimichurri and roasted vegetables. Easy and perfect for the family or whatever the occasion. <laughs> Happy holidays. I'm like, get after it, Jordan. Like the pork itself is so tender, like the dryness, it's soft enough you almost can't tell. And then you add the sauce, you add the veggies. The chimichurri yeah. is like what really mm. yeah. sends it over the edge. I'm just gonna. Oh, I'm gonna do this like loaded that. over here. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do that too. Oh my god. Mm. Oh, you like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is amazing. Oh man, I'm just gonna do this. Not bad. Thank you so much for watching this episode of EDM Matters. Hope you have a happy holidays. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us out. And we will see you in the new year. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for having me, man. Ah, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right.